Take that, Putin. Take that. My Azovs will kill you. You put them there. And all the Putin troops are dead, daddy. This is how you win the war. This is how you win. You get me? Watch and learn, daddy. Then you put your Azovs there and you win. Good what son. happened to these two what guys? What about under my Azov troops? What happened to them? They're not looking too good. That's Private Jenkins and Private Kenny. They got killed. Private Jenkins has a baby girl that was born seven pounds six ounces. He's never seen her. He wanted to get back to Bluebell, Pennsylvania, and hold her. Private Kenny's wife is mighty sick. She has something called a brain aneurysm. You mean an aneurysm? Private Kenny needs to get back safe and take care of her. I don't like when people look at me like that. Stop looking at me. Tell me, son. Have you How been you taking like my look? white powder I left on the table? Tell look me the there. truth. Oh my god. Is it okay if I look back now, Cole? Tap once for no and twice for yes if you want. You wouldn't want to go for a walk, would you? <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my new video. Hope you enjoyed that clip. That clip was one of my um, favorite clips from my, one of my favorite movies, Sixth Sense. And of course, it reminded me of a uh, nine-year-old son of Zelensky giving his dad advice about military matters. And you can see why the Ukrainians are basically dying on the field because uh, you have your nine-year-old basically making up stuff and putting these troops to their deaths. It is funny, but it's also very sad as well. Um, it's probably happen happening in real life. I w wouldn't be surprised if Zelensky and his little son are taking some white powder and making shit up as they go along. Who knows? But one thing for sure is you can guarantee that boy is going to be growing up and going to turn into a spoiled brat if he isn't one already. He's going to take after his dad. A real privileged spoiled brat anyway let's carry on with the show guys I'm gonna start with uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard as you mostly know that Johnny Depp has won his case uh, and I'm showing you this Sun article because if you remember Johnny Tr Jepp tried to sue the Sun uh, this was a few years ago when the Sun posted on their frontline heading that he is a wife beater um, they completely took Amber Heard's sides without listening to any of his side, without looking at any of the evidence. And they basically called him a wife beater and they put him on the front page, you know, calling him a wife beater. He obviously tried to sue them and the bloody judge uh, went in Amber Heard's favor. Uh, sounds like he was probably bought or he's just stupid. You know, it's a real shame British justice system. You just can't trust it, to be honest. Look what's happening to Assange as well. You just can't trust any of these bloody British uh, judges. Anyway, I was looking at this Sun paper and they've really changed their tune. However, I don't see any apology from the Sun. None at all. You know, they need to be the first to apologise to Johnny Depp for calling him a wife beater. And this case, you know, is... It's really, really great for humanity and, you know, we, we're living in a council, council culture and over the years, women had a lot of power, especially after the Me Too movement. And women had a lot of power 
and all a woman has to has to do now is come on a show or post something on social media saying that this guy did this to me this guy did that to me and that's it you know you got your woke mob and your twitter mob they will cancel that guy without looking at any evidence without listening to his point of view they will just take the woman's side for it they will just take woman's word for it but people don't realize women lie as well as men you know women are human you know men lie women lie they both lie you can't just take a woman's word word for it you know sometimes women lie for certain reasons and you know there's a lot of men out there who are under rape allegations and all other you know domestic violence allegations who are actually deserve to be guilty but there are people out there who are actually innocent and women just say it just to kind of just out of spite exactly what's happening here this woman done it out of spite and the jury found her guilty you know this kind of stuff is really really good for humanity it's a middle finger to the cancel culture out there you know Johnny Depp basically got cancelled he got cancelled from um, all of these movies like Pirates of the Caribbean like the Harry Potter one I think it's called the Fantastic Beasts he hasn't had a movie deal for years he literally got cancelled the poor guy and his kids were being bullied at school saying your dad's a wife beater and people were calling him a wife beater literally got cancelled without any evidence any evidence and this is the cancel culture we live in it's not just happening to him it's happening to every single person out there if you go against the narrative if you go on twitter for example you talk nice things about putin you get cancelled easily you know if you're russian you get cancelled if you're chinese you'll get cancelled if you're muslim you get cancelled this is how they control the public you know they use social media as a tool to cancel people and this is why people don't have a voice because they're scared of being cancelled if you stand up and you you actually talk against the narrative in twitter you try and say something uh, favorable to russia for example watch how you get cancelled the next day next day you get cancelled and twitter will ban you easily and it's happened to so many people you got scott ritter you got other people who are being banned from twitter even on youtube there's not many channels out there who are favorably talking about russia or china because as soon as you do they, you get shadow banned or you get cancelled you know the same way i'm being shadow banned same way most of my channels get demonetized it's, it's happening but you have all of these lying channels out there youtube channels that are going along with the narrative going along with that russia is losing ukraine is winning these guys are being pushed out by youtube these guys get pushed out by twitter so they get more of these ridiculous fake followers and brainwashed people following them but channels such as mine channels that speak the truth they don't really get pushed out as much it's only down to um word of mouth you know you know your word of mouth basically gets you gets you places but apart from that youtube is not going to help you it's not going to push your videos out there in fact it's going to demonetize most of them and this is the cancel culture we live in and this is why people cannot speak out cannot have a voice you know i showed you a video the other day about um you know we've lost a lot of humanity we, you know back in the days 80s 90s people had a voice people used to speak out on both sides people used to call out any bs it doesn't happen anymore people are scared of being cancelled that's why you know, and it's people are getting cancelled left right and center with no evidence you don't even need to go to the police anymore you know just post your story in social media and that's it you find the guy guilty everybody will find him guilty and there's so many people get cancelled like that it's absolutely ridiculous the kind of cancel culture we live in so i'm really proud of uh, johnny he fought for what he believes in and he fought for what's right he's fought for his children he's cleared his name and now i hope he gets his career back but he's not going to get that time back they lost he lost about 10 years of not having any work you know it's a, it's a big lesson out there you need 
you know, if you fight cancel culture, you fight for what you believe, eventually the truth will come out. Eventually, you know, you will deserve what you get. And this woman, oh my God, what an awful woman. I mean, any woman, I don't care how attractive you are, if you start dumping your excrements on someone's bed or your own bed, I don't care how pretty you are, you'd be out on the street. I'm surprised you didn't kick her out there and then. This is a, she's an awful woman. Even after all these years, she's going around lying about him. You know, the, the right thing she she should have this. You know, the right thing she should have said is, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk too much about the case. But if she came out with the truth years ago. And she can see how he was being cancelled left, right, and centre. If she just came out years ago and she said something like, you know, uh, you know the claims, it w people take take it out of proportion. He he hasn't really hit me. I, you know, people just took it out of pro out of proportion, or you know, maybe I exaggerated a bit. It would have been much easier for her, but she would have gained so much more respect instead of trying to ruin the guy. You know, this woman has so much malice. And there's a lot of people like that, and you have people like that, you know, running the country as well. You have the White House, you have Boris's government. You know, these are evil, vindictive people who lie, who lie out the skin of their teeth, just for their own benefit. Just can't take it anymore. Just, you know, this is a really, really good win for humanity, not just Johnny Depp. You know, win for all the liars out there. And you see how many lies there are on the media, how much BS there is on the media, how much BS is coming out of the politicians, how much BS people are talking on social media. So it's really, really good news for a change when somebody who actually speaks the truth gets some justice for a change. It's really good news. I'm really, really happy for Johnny Depp. And I hope he gets really, really great offers, film offers, and his career starts taking off. And he deserves it. And I hope this woman never gets another job again. She does not deserve it. She needs to be kicked out of Hollywood. Because women like her gives a bad name to real abuse victims out there. You know, I know real abuse victims out there who are women who are actually getting beaten up by a husband. Real victims. You know, they're the ones that need help. Not not this woman lying and this woman lying and, you know, it really, really puts a bad name for women out there who are really, really getting hurt. And nothing will be done about it. People will think, oh, you're another Amber Heard, you're lying about it. You know, this kind of stuff is really bad, you know. I think um, it's great for humanity and I think women shouldn't really get away with stuff like this, saying whatever they want to say, put, you know, destroying a man's career just because... She, you know, because she's vindictive and just because she can, because she's a woman and because he's a me too and people are afraid to be cancelled so they're forced to agree with her. This is a virtue signaling woke world that we live in and I'm sick of it, absolutely sick of it and I'm so glad he's won. Anyway, let's move on guys. So we're going to talk about Boris Johnson. First, Boris Johnson reveals whether he intends to stay in power. Why doesn't, doesn't this guy go already? You know, we're sick of him. Absolutely sick of him. And look at what he said. The British Prime Minister argues that he cannot abandon his nation amid economic pressures and the conflict in Ukraine. Please, please abandon us. Please, I beg you. Please abandon us. What the hell does he think he's all talking about? And why has he put the conflict in Ukraine in there? Like anybody cares in England. The BBC doesn't even cover it anymore. It's because he wants to be the leader of Ukraine. He doesn't want to be the leader of UK. He's not even doing anything UK. Every time he speaks on Prime Minister's um, question time, he's talking about Ukraine or he's flying to Ukraine. He's doing stuff for Ukraine. He's going to meetings for Ukraine. He's trying to get these sanctions done and, you know, all he's doing is, is stuff for Ukraine. He's not done anything for the country. So we're having this Queen's uh, Jubilee celebration at the moment. And apparently 
is costing the British taxpayer over 2.5 billion. Um, she's having a massive party, obviously out of taxpayer's expense. Not only that, we have a holiday on Thursday and Friday. So imagine the economic damage this is causing to UK when you have businesses closed on Thursday and Friday. Can you imagine the economic damage this is causing? And 2.5 billion is costing for a massive party that she's doing and then uh, not counting all of the losses from the businesses that are going to be shut down for, the t for, t for two days. You know, we're talking about five to ten million billion this would cost. And is this something that we can afford right now? Isn't the Queen... Doesn't the Queen realise what kind of issues England is having? You know, while she's in a palace sitting down, bailing with the Prince for sleeping with other women, or I'm talking about Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein, she's bailing him out with taxpayers' money, now she's making par having parties with taxpayers' money while she's sitting in a little palace, or shall I say big palace, while everyone else is suffering around England. Anyway, let's move on. UK firms slam prospects Brexit EU trade as they face same nightmare week after week. So the British businesses are still suffering from Brexit. Um, let me tell you this. I actually... I actually did not vote for Brexit. I actually wanted to stay uh, part of Europe, uh, mainly for the economy, because I knew that British businesses will really suffer, and they are really suffering. While you have to just look at British businesses now, th there's so much red tape, and they cannot trade with Europe anymore, so they're pretty much stuck. Uh, British manufacturing is going down, British exports are going down. And I can see Britain really, really suffering. And after the after Brexit, um, obviously you had the COVID, uh, and now with all of the supply chain issues and economic issues, Britain is having a three tier attack, three pronged attack. And I must say, you know, when I said that I didn't vote for Brexit, I'm really glad that that they have left Europe. I'm really, really glad. I'd rather be independent than be with those bunch of clowns run by Ursula von der Leyen, that evil villain from um, My Mermaid or something. Seriously, I'd rather be independent than be with those EU clowns. But the problem is, we are suffering economically, and it wasn't a good idea. And now we've become the poodle of the United States. You know, if you're going to leave the EU, why don't you just become independent? And and become neutral. There is no point in being such a poodle to the United States. There is no point. You are just making more enemies around the world and you are just relying on, e on, on the Americans to give you scraps. And this is exactly what's happening. The Americans are giving Britain scraps. They are not even given a trade deal. So what is the point of being a poodle to them? If I was leader, I would literally stand up and say, America, if you don't give us a trade deal, that's it. We'll go and um, have free trade deals with uh, China and Russia. Screw you guys. You know, it doesn't even make sense because America, all America does is threaten us. You know, it's threaten, threatening us about Northern Ireland. You know, whatever America wants, we just do. I'm talking about Assange. Oh my god, bunch of poodles, and the guy just needs to go, Boris Johnson just needs to go, he's the biggest poodle of all. You know, when are we going to actually stand up on our own two feet? Have pe people forgotten how great Britain was? You know, when Britain was great, were they, were they listening to America? Was, were they a poodle of America? Seriously, do you need to start standing up? Even if you can't stand up, at least be neutral. You know, if you were neutral, you could have been... You, you could have been uh, there negotiating a peace deal with Ukraine and, and Russia, rather than sending weapons, rather than put, poking the bay even more. It's absolutely ridiculous. Seriously, Britain, just wake up. Start look, smelling the roses. 
So, UK posed to defy Russian warnings and send US-made M270 multiple launch rocket systems to Ukraine. So as you know, they are now sending more rocket systems, uh, long-range ones, to Ukraine. And like I said, Biden's already done that as well with his long range. And this is going to cause more issues. First of all, this will escalate the conflict. This will cancel any peace talks um, that will happen between Ukraine and Russia. And if, if, if Ukraine starts attacking Russian cities, then it will escalate very, very fast. And Russia could even um, start attacking you know, Ukraine's um, Kiev and, and other major cities as well. Who knows? I mean, it could escalate further beyond the borders. I don't know. But the fact is, you know, this is a serious escalation of the of the conflict that they are doing. And also, they are not looking at the dark web because most of these weapons are now ending up on the dark web. And imagine if Al-Qaeda or ISIS uh, starts getting hold of these weapons. And if they move these weapons to... Uh, Syria or something like that they can attack you know US bases or Israel from there you know this could seriously seriously harm uh, the West in the long term if if they and if these weapons end up in the wrong hands I just think it's a really really bad idea and Britain poodles of America as you've seen rather than becoming an independent country with his own foreign policies, they decided to be a puppet state of the US and doing whatever their master wants them to. It's absolutely embarrassing, guys. Absolutely embarrassing. So I want to talk about this as well. Um, Kremlin explains why he doesn't trust Zelensky. So this is the thing about the peace deal, right? I mean, these guys are escalating the conflict, sending long-range weapons, Britain and... Germany is doing it as well, sending anti-aircraft missiles, and and you have um, US also sending more weapons, and this is just escalating the conflict even more. And who the hell is really losing in this conflict? You know, it's not Russia. You just have to look at um, the. I mean, I look at Telegram daily, and I can see exactly all of the. Um, casualties that ukraine is suffering okay the first few weeks of the war you know there was a lot of uh, russian casualties but it doesn't happen anymore now all you see are ukrainian casualties you're not going to see anywhere on twitter anymore nobody's po posting on twitter about russian casualties anymore because there are none you know there, there there are no more tanks being blown up no more people dying russian soldiers dying no more planes uh or well, helicopter has been shot down because it's not happening anymore. All you see is hundreds and hundreds of Ukrainian soldiers dying. Then you have another hundreds and hundreds, up to 500 Ukrainian soldiers getting injured a day. And I'm not even counting the how many Ukrainian soldiers even surrender. You know, we're talking about close to thousand, thousand a day they are losing, whether it's via dead or injury or surrendering. You know. Ukraine cannot g carry on going like this because human life is limited. Not only that, their best troops are getting destroyed in Donbass. Their best troops were in Mariupol, their best troops are in Donbass, they have been destroyed. So all of these new troops coming in, they are basically um, have no training and they have been sent to the front lines as cannon fodder and they are being killed. It's absolutely ridiculous. And why should Kremlin trust Zelensky and the West? All the West has done is, you know, turn back on their word again and again and again. You have to go back to the Berlin Wall. You know, at the time when USSR, you know, basically made a peace deal and, and they were going to leave Berlin. And they're going to break down the wall. They were given assurances by the by the West that the, uh, Germany would not n join NATO. Uh, Germany would be neutral. G Germany would not be armed. They had these ass ass assurances. Now they've been let down. And look what what Germany is doing now. They are building their weapons up. 
They're sending weapons to Ukraine. Who do you think is hurt then? Who do you think is let down? Who do you think is betrayed? It's one betrayal after another. Then you had the coup going on in Ukraine and and you know you had um, Zelensky you know attacking the Donbass area for eight years even though they've signed the Minsk agreements you know Germans the French they were they were in agreement with, with the Minsk agreement and at no point they decided to implement it they decided you know to, to say you know what Russia screw you we'll do what we want we don't care we've signed any Minsk agreements we have the West backing so we don't need to have we know we don't need to follow any agreements so the West, collective West, I'm talking about America, Britain, France, Germany, they probably told uh, Ukraine, oh, don't worry about the Minsk agreement. Russia's a paper tiger. They're not going to do anything. We have your back anyway. And now look what's happened. They have pushed this conflict. They, have, they promised NATO would, would not um, get Ukraine in, into NATO. They promised that Ukraine would never be joining NATO. They promised Ukraine would stay neutral. All those promises were out the window. They have been arming NATO, I mean Ukraine, they have been arming, put, putting military bases in Ukraine, they have been arming the soldiers, sending weapons, even though it's not a NATO country, they have been treating it like a NATO country. So why should Russia sit back? Why should Russia trust the West? Why should Russia trust Ukraine? There was a peace deal, nearly they signed in Turkey. You know, Zelensky was about to sign a peace deal. Then you have Boris Johnson flying all the way from Britain to Ukraine in his private jet. He doesn't really have a private jet, but he borrowed one. And he told Zelensky, no, no, don't sign any peace deals. You're going to win the war. We'll give you what you need. We'll give you money. We'll give you weapons. Do not sign that peace deal. And then Zelensky just tore up that peace deal. He said, all right, fine. I won't sign it. You guys give me weapons. You guys give me money. And Boris Johnson is like, yeah, well done, good, good, you are winning the war, you will win the war, blah, blah, blah. They are not winning the war. They are losing badly, they are losing land, they are losing people, they are losing infrastructure, they are losing money. Can you imagine the amount of money that Ukraine is losing? Ukraine is not making any money at the moment. They are running the country for free. The only money they're making is, is the money that's coming from the West. Money for, coming from America, money coming from EU, money coming from um, crowdfunding. That's the only money they're making. Most refugees have left the country. Um, there is very, you know, there's a very small number of businesses running in, in, um, in Ukraine. All of the major businesses have been shut down. They can't even export anything because all of the ports are closed. You have their major industries shut down. The major steelworks in Mariupol destroyed. You have Motor Sitch, the company which makes um, military parts, destroyed. Every major industry uh, company has been destroyed. Every mining company has stopped. Every um, All the foreign companies have run out of Ukraine. They've pulled all of their foreign... Uh, workers out, you know, people are hardly paying any tax in Ukraine, you know, people are hardly paying anything for electricity. You know, Ukraine is losing a lot of money, they're literally about to collapse. They just survive, they're just surviving on US money, EU money. And why should the Russians trust the Ukrainians? They keep going back on their words, they're just proper puppets. They're proper puppets to the West. So why should Russia trust anything Ukraine say? Why should Russia trust anything the West say? The West have been going back on their treaties, going back on the on their word ever since uh, the Berlin Wall days. So no, there's no trust left for 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 Russia. There's no trust left for for them to work out a peace deal. Not anymore. You know, Russia is winning this war. There is no reason for them to get into the negotiation negotiation table. The only onus is for Ukraine to get into the negotiation table because the longer they leave it, the more they will lose. Russia will take more land. Russia, Ukraine will lose more people. 
they will lose more infrastructure, more people will be leaving as refugees, the country will be destroyed. This is what I think will happen to Ukraine. I can see Ukraine losing all of the East, all of the East. Um, I say this because um, the river gives a natural buffer for with insurgencies and stuff because you have all of these uh, weapons uh, flowing in from Poland, uh, coming in from America, UK, Germany, etc., NATO, and this river basically gives them a nice little buffer so any insurgency will have to obviously cross the river and cause any trouble so they could have this uh, militarized um, these river crossings uh, so the only thing that will probably affect uh, Russia is long-range weapons so they could have these um, long-range rockets that are being sent by America and UK they could be stationed anywhere around Ukraine and these can be used to attack um, the east of Ukraine or even Russia but Russia has air superiority and they'll be taking these out immediately and not only will they be taking these out they will be throwing rocket attacks to the rest of Ukraine to Kiev um, in Lviv and um, they'll be taken out very very easily very easily also when Ukraine collapses and they will collapse eventually so if Russia takes all of the east and all of the south, I can see Ukraine splitting in two or maybe three and this part will be basically taken over by Poland with the peacekeeping troops and they will keep the middle part of Ukraine as a buffer and um, this will only be allowed if Poland give assurances that they're not going to be shipping weapons across um, to the central Ukraine to attack um, east of Ukraine or Russian forces. So if Poland can somehow agree to this and they will promise that no weapons will be flowed around into central U Ukraine, I can see Russia agreeing to that. If American weapons are still being flowed across Poland and is still coming into Ukraine, Russia will never agree to it. So I, I think in fact Russia will um, if it continues, Russia will basically patrol the borders around the Poland and they will destroy the infrastructure in Ukraine, in the middle part of Ukraine. And anything that comes through the borders, they, they will just blow it into smithereens. And these borders will be heavily monitored using drone satellite images. And they will also destroy the infrastructure as well. So these uh, weapons do not get, they don't move around in the rest of Ukraine. And if they want to make it into a war zone, Russia will be happily making this into a war zone. And the only people that are going to be losing are the people of Ukraine. So it's within you know, Ukraine's interest to have a peace deal. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people in Ukraine are not happy with the situation right now. You know, the way the country is being used as a poodle for the West. And they are using this as a proxy war and killing every single Ukrainian to the last Ukrainian. You know, I'm sure people will rise up in Ukraine and think, you know what, enough is enough. You know, we've had enough of this. And people will stand up eventually. And I can see things changing over the next few weeks. You will see, you know, already things are starting to change. You can see Zelensky is no, no way getting as much media attention anymore. You know, he's not even on the BBC anymore. BBC used to be, every single morning I used to look at BBC, used to be front page, Ukraine this, Ukraine that. Same with all of the other British papers. But if you look at all the British papers now, including BBC, you're not going to see any Ukraine news anymore. None of it. They've moved on to the ne next thing now. They've, nowadays they're talking about monkeypox. You know, they're talking about Boris. They have other things they are talking about nowadays. You know, nobody cares about Ukraine anymore. Then you see this story, Ukraine sacrifices foreigners first. So there's a story coming out of the Russian defense official and basically what they have done, they have caught a lot of foreigners who have surrendered in, in Ukraine, in Donbass. And all of these foreigners are basically saying that Ukrainians, in order to save Ukrainian lives, these foreigners are being sent to the front lines as cannon fodder. 
And if they refuse, they get shot by the Azovs. Apparently that's what's happening right now. So I just got to say a number of things. First of all, um, I'm not going to laugh, but this is what you get. This is what you get if you're going to go all the way to Ukraine and fight for Zelensky. You ask for it, guys. You know, you, you're not going to get any sympathy from me. You're not going to get any sympathy from Russia. You're not going to get any sympathy from Ukraine. You guys are going there as cannon fodder and losing your lives for what? For Zelensky? For Biden? For Boris? And if you get injured, who's going to pay for it? You're a bunch of idiots. If you're going to be stupid enough to go to Ukraine, be used as cannon fodder and put in the front line, then you deserve everything you get, I'm sorry to say. Seriously, you guys have no brains. So, uh, I'm going to talk about the Idiot of the Day Award. Uh, the Idiot of the Day Award goes to the EU because uh, Biden has basically hinted that because the EU has banned Russian oil, uh, Biden has said there's a lot of Russian oil in the market which they can get at a cheap price and they're going to make full use out of it and full advantage out of it. And again, it just shows the EU have been made to look like fools. Ursula has basically given the poison pill to every one of these EU members who has gone along with her narrative and they have gladly eaten that poison pill with a smile on their face and Biden is basically um, taking advantage of it. You know he's done it before where the Europeans basically sanctioned uh, Russian fertilizers, Americans did it as well then a couple of days later they cancelled um, or they reversed the sanctions on fertilizers. So the US are not really the Europeans friends, they are out for their own interests and you just have to look at the Europeans, um, I, mean, I mean the Americans history, you know they have never ever done anything which wasn't part of their own interest. Whatever is in their interest they did, you know, and all of these Europeans who think the Americans are their friends, uh, they will always stick by them, they're a bunch of idiots. Ursula, all of the other European leaders who want to be part of the club, you know, you're just getting made to look like idiots. You know, you are just made, being made to look like fools. And Biden is showing his real, um, his real intention. You know, but he's going to make money uh, regardless. And what he's going to do is going to buy these cheap Russian oil. He's going to buy it from a discount and he's going to sell it to the Europeans at twice the price or three times the price or even four times the price. If you add all of the... Um, uh, basically transport costs and things like that. They're going to come all the way to America, put in another container, ship it back to Europe. You know, it's going to be three, four times the cost. And the Europeans are falling for it. What a bunch of idiots. Basically, idiot of the day. So before I leave, this is going to be the final um, um, news article. I will end it by having a second idiot of the day. Um, there's no limits on how many idiots of the day I can have. Uh, but this is another idiot of the day. Ukraine gave assur assurances about US supplied weapons. Blinken. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Can you believe this shit? Can you really, really believe this shit? It's like... If you give your weapons to an ISIS member and you say... Make sure you don't use this weapon to blow yourself up or kill, kill someone but we're going to give this weapon to you what do you think the ISIS member is going to do? I mean seriously why do they think that Ukrainians are not going to misuse these long range weapons because the Ukrainians given them assurances so what if um, these, these soldiers in the battlefield who have not been trained by at all by the way one of them decides to point um, these long range weapons to a Russian city even though he hasn't, you know, basically Zelensky's uh, probably told him not to, but he's going to do it anyway. And he finally blows up some Russian um, school and kills loads of kids. What do you think Russia's going to do? What do you think the US is going to say? You know, when you give these Azovs, when you give these uh, idiots these weapons, they will obviously misuse it. Because you're in a war. 
you're in a war and obviously people are will do their own thing people will you know not many people will follow orders or some people will probably be given these orders maybe Zelensky will say you know what go for it hit these Russian cities you know how can you base give your weapons to just assurances how do you know these weapons are not going to be in the black market how do you know they're not going to be sold to ISIS or maybe other some other organization it's absolutely ridiculous how the US trusts Ukraine and the Ukraine has done nothing to be trusted about I mean even Trump said Ukraine is the most corrupt country in Europe even Trump said that and Ukraine has already shut down a few gas pipes going to Hungary so how can you trust Ukraine it's absolutely ridiculous this guy's a bunch of clowns so you see the second media of the day goes to Blinken and Biden so that's all I have time for today guys let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in the next video don't forget to like share subscribe if you can join my patreon it'd be amazing um, I really really need your help and it really helps me stay independent it really helps me with uh, creating these videos most of my videos get demonetized by YouTube so you guys are keeping me afloat so I appreciate that thanks for all of your help so far or you can buy me a coffee instead if you don't want to join my patreon anyway I'll see you guys soon and I'll see you in the next video take care for now